Today we're going to talk about some of the complications for CMC arthroplasty at the base of the thumb. The CMC joint is the most common joint in the hand to get arthritis. It's at the base of the thumb. We've talked about this in other chronicles. It's very unstable and it's the joint that makes a thumb a thumb and not a finger. It enables you to move your thumb from being next to and almost parallel with the fingernails of the index finger to being opposite it and away from them so that you can grab large objects. And it's key to prehension of the hand. In general, arthritis of the hand is more amenable to modified arthroplasties as opposed to implant arthroplasties than the lower extremities. Most of the joints of the hand, including the distal interphalangeal joints, the middle joints at the PIP joint, the MP joint, and even the wrist, can be improved from an arthritic condition with modified arthroplasties involving synovectomy, capsulectomy, excision of reactive bone, and improve their function for a prolonged period of time. This is most true at the CMC joint at the base of the thumb, where excision of the trapezoid and excision of osteophytes at the base of the thumb metacarpal will alleviate the symptoms, and if a good reconstruction is done at the base of the thumb, you have a stable thumb that's good for pinch and still works for a large prehension. Some of the complications from this have to be treated because there are certain aspects that are prone to failure. If we look at the wrist, drawing the radius and the ulna, we'll draw a portion of the carpal bones or wrist bones, including the scaphoid, looking at the radial column, the trapezium, the trapezoid, and then the thumb metacarpal and the index finger metacarpal as if we're looking at a wrist at the radial column represented like this. The trapezium gets arthritic and the simple excision of the trapezium will take care of most of their pain. But if a patient has a significant toe of the boot osteophyte, which is usually present, that has to be excised. If it wasn't excised at the index operation, it'll need re-excision on any return to try to solve additional pain at the base of the thumb. Another point that can be difficult to care for in CMC arthroplasty is ST arthritis. So that after you've taken out the trapezium, there's still arthritis occasionally at what was the STT joint, scaphotrapezium trapezoid joint. And with arthritis here, a simple solution that has been very effective, particularly in older lower demand patients, is to excise the proximal half of the trapezoid so it no longer impinges at the scaphoid. This has been effective in getting rid of residual pain at the ST joint after CMC arthroplasty but maintains good motion of both the wrist and the thumb CMC joint, enabling excellent prehension. Probably the most complicated end result that's difficult to get rid of after CMC arthroplasty is hyperextension of the thumb MP joint. So continuing our thumb distally, if the thumb metacarpal and the phalanx, the proximal phalanx of the thumb, are able to hyperextend the thumb can collapse into a Z deformity, which is difficult to show if you don't have the instability. But with CMC arthritis, the base of the thumb kicks out, and then many patients will have an adduction deformity of their metacarpal of the thumb and compensate for grasp by hyperextending at the MP joint. When that's the case, after excision of the trapezium, they can continue to have this adduction deformity with hyperextension of the MP joint if that hasn't been taken care of at the time of surgery. Then the patient will come in with an unstable thumb and an inability to grasp because the thumb collapses whenever they grasp against a hard object. The cure for this has been discussed in many different ways, one being a volar plate advancement or excision of the sesamoids. Most all capsulodesis techniques for the thumb MP joint are inadequate and will stretch out over a period of time. The other solution is to fuse the MP joint, which takes away joint motion at that level, decreasing the thumb's function, but produces a functional thumb as long as the patient has a good IP joint distally to that. Both of these problems can be avoided even in the patient who's noted to have significant hyperextension preoperatively by a good reconstruction at the base of the thumb. The tendon reconstruction both supports the thumb, most commonly with a slip of FCR that's run underneath the thumb and down through a hole and coiled up underneath. 
And this acts as an effective bumper, but that's not its most important function. Its most important function is to adduct or bring the base of the metacarpal back toward the index finger base. And if it's able to do that, the patient will not have access to the hyperextension at the next joint out, at the MP joint. And by keeping the thumb moved away from the hand, by keeping the base of the metacarpal next to the index metacarpal, that thumb hyperextension is not a problem and the thumb does not collapse when used for pinch. So that attention to these three details, the toe of the boot, the ST joint arthritis, and the base of the thumb metacarpal will obviate any need for revision at the CMC joint and decrease the number of complications. Thank you.